Hello everyone, my name is Christopher and welcome to the Science of Intentional Creation series. This is episode number seven and I'm with my friend Zazu. We're doing, uh, we're trying this outside. We've been experimenting with some different formats so you're going to get a little bit of background noise. Hopefully you'll be fine. She has been evolving in the process of recording yes, our yes. conversations. So that's what it's all about. So how are you, Zazu? Always just intensely delighted. Great. We've been asking people for questions for Zazu, and we have one we'd like to share. Are you ready for a question, or would you like to start with something else, Zazu? Oh, I have the answer, but go ahead and ask. All right, good. So this question is from Angela, and I'll just read it. It seems most people not all but most, are making the majority of their wealth peddling poison from toxic products, processed foods, pharmaceuticals, cosmetics. The list includes just about everything we in the modern world eat, sniff, drink, wear, sit on, live on, or pop, from, or from the raping, pillaging, and pollution of the earth via the large corporations when they manufacture this junk. Not only is this bad for everyone and everything, but it should be racking up some nasty karma for ones doing it. My question is, what kind of replacement work would you recommend for these people that would bring them adequate wealth and prosperity? Well, first I want to thank my new friend for writing. I do believe that might be the first letter, maybe the third. Now, as to the letter, I understand the confusion that can come about that puts you all in a misperception because you don't remember traveling around the universe being somewhere else other than your experiential life or in this system because if you did, you might recall that no other place are there so many options, so many choices. If you'd like, you can say the law of attraction here in the Earth Life System offers more than a rainbow of things that you can attract that are not existent and therefore not an option anywhere else. Am I saying be raped and pillaged? Frankly, if that's what you want to attract, I am not going to tell you not to. I am going to tell you instead that you are a great cosmic being. My friend Angela is a great cosmic being and so are the creators of so many things such as the pesticides or bad food or whatever she listed. My question to my friend Angela is, what and where is your intent? Because the law of self says that you have to honor yourself. You have to know yourself and you have to abide by and live according to yourself. If you do not live honoring self, according to yourself, law of attraction comes along and says, well, what are you living by? I'll bring that to you. You don't like being dumped on, and yet that's what you're focusing on, and you're not focusing on yourself, then I'll bring you more being dumped on. Now, the truth is, you can take that in a bit of a harsh cutting way, if you like. I do not intend my words in any way other than intentionally. I am giving it to you, as I always do, straight, as they say. I am telling you that where you focus and that who you are is, in fact, exactly what Law of Attraction is using to attract your life. If you want to tell me that your life should be filled with great things, great love, great healthy products, great fantastic experiences, then I say, are you honoring that greatness in yourself, the love in yourself, the quality in yourself? And 
as any knowledgeable person will tell you, I'm going to say, if you are not experiencing those things, it's because you're not honoring them in yourself. That is plain and simple. There is no exception in all the vast universe to this rule. Not within anyone or anything. You, my friend, get to intentfully say who it is that you are. And if you look at yourself, and you recognize yourself to be a wonderful person, you're going to experience wonderful things. You're going to find wonderful people in your life. If you are focused upon the people who are wronging the earth and wronging your life and wronging the lives of so many millions of others, then I tell you, you are already seeing the wrong everywhere because you are saying that you are a wrong detector that you are an agent for wrongness, which may be a great television program, but may not be how you really prefer to live your life. The intent that you put forward is the intent that is going to come back to you. And so I say to you, a better question than basically how would they help themselves and still make money, that's not relevant. They are a part of the system. They are a part of life. They are there to serve anyone who, whose energy they match. If you want something different, look in your heart, my friend. Because in your heart, there is nothing but pure energies, pure essences. There is nothing but unbridled intent. And that, when you bring that out, when you ride that horse, so to speak, when you live that way and you know yourself in those lights, well, that changes everything. It changes how you see yourself, how you see others, how you see your world. And frankly, when you are seeing through yourself and what yourself really is, you are seeing the world more clearly. When you are seeing everything you do not prefer, you do not want to see, you do not agree with, you do not think is right, you do not think should be, you are seeing the things you don't like about yourself, the things you don't agree with about yourself, and so on. So I say to you, my friend, be wise, as am I. Be very wise and recognize that your world, this experiential life system, is here in service of you. And as it relates to you, it is not necessarily in service of the rest of the world, of those who are doing things that are right or wrong. It is you, only you. When you look at you and only you, the great cosmic being that you are, is no longer confined to the little bit of space of your body, of your limited physical abilities, of your limited physical thoughts. When you open up to that cosmic being, you open up to unlimited everything. Unlimited power, unlimited manifestation, unlimited cre creativity, everything. Yes, all still within the earth life system, that experiential life system, which means that you can't wave a wand and change everything overnight, although you have done it at other times and in other places, and you might have a sense of that. But when you're patient with yourself and you are focused upon your intent, you've come from that law of self, then you watch as law of attraction has everything fall into place as you would have it. My friend, I would say that is a good example and I hope that my friend Angela can understand that this is about living the life she desires. Who cares about other people? She doesn't go to bed with all of them. So what does it matter? If it's not your experience, then dump it and change your experience. 
And I think my friend might have a good sense of that. Mm -hmm. When you talk, I get the sense that this universe, creation, call it whatever you want, really is infinite. And we can choose how that, and by infinite, you have infinite good things, infinite things you perceive as bad things, infinite abundance, infinite lack, infinite health, infinite ill health, infinite good foods, infinite bad foods. But it's really, it sounds like what you're saying is when we tune into ourselves, what we desire, and focus on that, then that fact of focusing on that will expand it. expands it and out of that infinite universe and we reflect back yes. that which we desire. Yes, absolutely. It's akin to this. This is sort of a bad example, but it's a good example. When you go to an amusement park, there are all these rides, all these shows, all these choices. And it depends on which park you go to. And you get to walk in and you, my friends, you get to choose where you go and have your fun. Well, that is life in a nutshell. You get to choose where you go and have your fun. If you want to know what your life purpose is, there it is. Because when you make a choice, you say, I like the slow ride, I like the faster than fast ride. You're saying who you are, and you go and you find those rides, and exactly what you're saying occurs to you. All of a sudden, all you see is all the faster than fast rides or all the slow rides. I'm going to take my child to the kitty ride, and all you see is the kitty rides. And you can see all the rides they have or all that they don't have. That is your option. But I ask you, my friend, when you find a lack, are you fulfilled? Are you happy? Are you in a good mood? And is that who you truly are? Because if you are wise, you're not going to waste your time with who you are not. In other words, don't be dramatic. And I like to say that quite a bit. My friend here has heard that one or 100 times. Why? Because it's black and white from where I am. You're either yourself or you're being dramatic. And when you're dramatic, you invent all sorts of storylines, all sorts of issues, all sorts of problems that simply are not who you are. They are reasons, you say, that keep you from knowing the greatness, the creativity, the wealthy, the loving, the this and that person that you are. Go to the park and have fun. It's not complicated at all. Go to the park and have the funnest, greatest, most thrilling day you can. And yes, absolutely, where you go then determines what you come home and say that park has. So you have two people who go to the same park or life, go through life, and they say completely different things. I ask you, what do you want to say at the end of the hour, at the end of your day, and certainly at the end of your experiential life? You're meant to experience. You experience all day and all night. Do you want to waste your time with experiencing things you don't like, you don't prefer? Or are you going to honor yourself? When you honor yourself, Law of Attraction has a lot more to work with. How's that for a good quote? When you honor yourself, Law of Attraction has a lot more to work with. I like that. Why? Because when you are lost in the drama, inauthentic in your feelings, in your words, it's empty, it's hollow, it doesn't really exist, and in 10 years, or 10 minutes, you will have forgotten about it because it doesn't exist. When you are honoring yourself and you are who and what you authentically are, when you are being the cosmic being that you are, you are great, you are vast, you are a magnetic core that just automatically brings things to him or her. 
What do you prefer to experience? That's what I hope my friend asks herself. That's what I want all of my friends to ask themselves. Because at the end of the day, you're the only one who cares, aren't you? You're the only one that goes to bed in your own bed, in your own body, having your own dreams. When I was 17, started my path at the innocent age, one of my... You, my friend, I don't <laughs> know if you were ever innocent. That's true. I guess it's, that's all depends on how you perceive it. One of my favorite um, authors at the time was a man named Gurdjieff, who was a, a sage, you would say, from <clears throat> Persia, Russia, that area of the world back in the early 1900s. And he would say that um, a lot of mankind has it wrong, and that is, he said, the universe creation is much, much bigger than we can ever imagine. And there are a lot yes. of forces that are so much bigger than we are that it's really quite futile to yes. try to change those things. As a matter of fact, even things like that affect our planet directly, like major wars, major events, ma trends in economy sometimes, things like that, are really affected by forces beyond humanity's ability to control. But that being said, we do have a saving grace. And it's just what we've been talking about now. Yes. And that is, we have the ability to focus on what we truly desire that comes from self and have that become our experience. And when we do that, the rest really doesn't matter. As a matter of fact, it becomes really a waste of time because some of these things are so much bigger than we are anyway. And many people go about their day trying to change the world, so to speak, trying to change the universe, when all they really need to do is change their focus. Change themselves. And, my friend, there are forces far greater than you can imagine. There are unlimited realms, unlimited energies affecting your life, absolutely. And if you want to find impact in your own life, you become almost unstoppable in your intent. Without your intent and lost in drama, you have no purpose. Where is your purpose? When you are in intent, you align yourself with some of those great forces that you will never understand, you will never see while you are here. You're not meant to. You are meant instead to have fun, to have an experience after experience after experience. If you were meant to rewire the world, fix it, solve problems of the world, wouldn't you be handed better tools? Of course. Either that or you have been put in a rat race, in a maze with no exit. How you look at that is really up to you. But I say to you, my friends, in your intent, you plow through any maze. In your intent, you have the ability to change things that could be unchangeable or to change your life so that you are not affected in negative ways by things that are unchangeable. It is a experiential life system. And it is a system. And there are other great cosmic beings having an experience as well. And this system accommodates all of these great cosmic beings. Why change it? It's perfect. It is absolutely perfect. However, you don't want to fix it. You don't want to change it. You do want to be fun. Just be a fun person. Have a happy life. She likes to say it's all about the riches in life and I like that. It's pretty good Because it's not about money, although that might be some of the riches It's about the things that fill your life and make it rich Meaningful because otherwise things can be so empty So be sure your life is filled my friends with whatever is meaningful to you and really There's a saying the one with the most toys at the end wins that's not true. The one who's had the richest experiences, had the most fun, felt the happiest, those are the ones that win.
what I was saying was that if we were really in tune with ourselves, not only uh, our cosmic being, but who we are on, a, on our structured personality, our mental, emotional, and physical selves, we'd be more in tune with knowing what was actually healthy for us, including things like healthy food. And if the majority... Even just a healthy thought. Even a healthy thought. And it only stands to reason then, if more people were more in tune with that and only would choose healthy food, guess what would happen to food manufacturers? They would create more healthy food. It's supply yes, but I wouldn't even look at that, my friend. I want all of my friends to be focused upon themselves. Who cares? It doesn't matter. Yes, the world will resolve itself. But I say the focus should be on your enjoyment, on your day. You're absolutely right. When You're absolutely right when people are tapped into themselves, living by the law of self, all of those things start to resolve because there's simply no demand. But who cares? <laughs> who cares? Absolutely. All you should care about is your experience. That's right. That's right. Well, thank you, Zazu. And we welcome more questions. These questions are really good because... Yes, because I like having conversations <laughs> with my friends. And they, they help everyone, I think, look a little deeper, and everybody can relate to any of the questions anybody says, on, at least on some level. So please send more questions. Yes, because I have lots of answers for you. And we look forward to uh, connecting with you again on the next Science of Intentional Creation series. Thank you, Zazu. Until next time, my friend. It is great to see you evolve. Thank you.